Radio Easter Feed. Owns a Stasi, owns a talent, owns a mensa. What's up, owns by no sis fear? 536 Talk to us, the dang rack here. Fiel Gunterejo Radio Easter Feed. Easter Feed. Our station, our talent, our people. Hello everybody, this is Wolfred Sal here coming to you live from Radio Easter River. Um, let's dig into the word today. Let's go to Romans, the book of Romans. Romans 12 verse 1 is where I wanna, where I wanna start off from. And the Apostle Paul writes here, and he says, I beseech you brethren, By the mercies of God to render your bodies as a living sacrifice. And then in verse 2 he says, And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to focus more on the latter part of of, 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 of that scripture that that I read. Verse 2 that says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye not conformed. Don't be like the world, the Amplified says. Don't act like the world. Don't conform towards same ideals and same ideas and to the same customs and cultures of this world. But be ye transformed. The word transformed to mean, means to change. Be ye changed by the renewing of your mind. How do we change? By the renewing of our minds. By renewing our minds, change occurs in our lives. So the Apostle Paul says, don't be like the world. Don't, don't conform to the same ideals, the same ideas, the same customs, the same ways, the same cultures as this world system. But be ye changed, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you, do you change from not being like the world to the way God says you should be? Because you see, we have two systems operating in in life. We have the kingdom of God system and we have the world system or Satan system. The Bible says in the book of John, John 4, it says that Satan is the God of this world. He's the small g God of this world. Meaning that he is the in control and he rules and he regulates this world system. He's the God of this world system. When Adam sold out his birthright and gave it all over to Satan, Satan became the God of this world system. He became the God of this world. So the Apostle Paul admonishes us here to not to stay in the world system now that you've given your life to Jesus. Remember he says, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 he says if any man is in Christ he is a new creature he is a new spirit species the old you has is gone and you've become a new spirit species and the old is gone and you're a new spirit being and it's a new spirit being in Christ Jesus that has never existed before So you now have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness, out of Satan's kingdom, out of this world system, into the kingdom of God's dear son, into the kingdom of light. And now that you're into God's kingdom, into the kingdom of light, or or transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, now the apostle Paul says here in Romans 12, be ye not conformed to the world. Don't be like The people in the world don't act like, don't believe like, don't conform, don't make your own and stop 
acting and being and thinking like the people in this world. You are now part of a new kingdom, of a new system. You are now part of God's system. And now he says, be ye changed. Be ye transformed. And how do you change? By the renewing of your mind. You see, in order to change, you got to understand that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. As a man thinketh, watch how I say it, as a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so easy. Normally, you know, the, the, the traditionally or the average Christian would just say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. But that's not what that scripture says. See, once again, it's the wrong, it's the wrong interpretation of what the word actually says. You see, you're not thinking with your heart. You're thinking with your soulish faculties. You're thinking with your mind. You've got to understand that man is a spirit. He possesses a soul and he lives in a physical body. You are a spirit. You're a spirit being. When Paul said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new spirit being. He is a new spirit species. You are a spirit species. And when you said yes to Jesus, you became a new spirit species because you were born anew. You were born again. And that born again experience is a spiritual experience. Your spirit was born again, and now you are a new spirit species. The old is gone, and everything became new. But that happened in the spirit realm. You, the spirit you, the real you, who is a spirit, was born again. But the soul is faculty. Remember, man is a spirit. He possesses a soul. And he lives in a physical body. Now the soulish part of you is the part that needs to be renewed. That's the part that Paul refers to in Romans 12 verse 2. When he says, if every man, when he says that you need to re- renew your, you need to change by the renewing of your mind. That the metamorphic change that comes about in your life comes about only By the renewing of your mind. You see the most important thing. That any man can do. And has to do. Or the biggest miracle that exists in life. Is when you and I. Give our lives to Christ. The born again experience. Is the most important experience. Is the biggest miracle. That can happen in the earth. That can happen in anybody's life. But the second most important thing as a Christian now is for you to renew your mind is for you to change your thinking is for you to do what Paul says in Romans 12 be you not conformed to this world but be you transformed now you gotta you gotta change in the soulish realm now you gotta change your mind the man is a spirit he possesses a soul and he lives in a physical body Now the soulish part of you, the soul consists of the mind, the will, the emotions, the intellect, and your personality. So the soul of man is separate to his spirit. I know we use it interchangeably. Tradition has taught us that the the, the soul and the spirit is the same, but it's not. Man is a spirit, he possesses a soul. Your soul is part of your spirit. And your soul lives in your physical body. Your soul with your spirit is housed by this shell, by this earth suit, by this body. This is just a body. But in your innermost being, you, the real you, the real Wolfram, is a spirit species and became a new spirit species the day that I said yes to Jesus and it's a new spirit species that has never existed before in Christ Jesus the new Wilfred is a new spirit being the old is gone and I'm uniquely designed uniquely made and in Christ Jesus being born in him and baptized in him I am a new spirit species that 
never existed before. But now this new spirit species needs to adapt to its surroundings. The new spirit species now needs to renew its soul. My soul, my, 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 my soul is faculties, my mind. Remember the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions, the intellect and your personality. That needs to be renewed. And how do we renew it? With the word of God. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, be ye changed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that transformation is not a one-time event. It is a lifelong process. You see, when you're born again, it's instantaneous. It's a one-time event. You're born again. The work of God is done in your life. You accept Jesus. You're born again. You're born anew, and it's done. But the second most important thing that needs to happen in your life is that you need to renew your mind. You need to change now. You need to undergo that metamorphic change. If you can think about the butterfly and how it goes through that metamorphic change, that's the way you and I change. And that change comes about by the working of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. You cannot change yourself. Only God can change a person. Only God can change you. And it's through the working of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you where he gives you the desires and he gives you the power to bring about the change and to do what pleases him. God works on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit and causes us to change. But that change comes about as we fellowship with him in the word, as we go through these holy scriptures, and as we get to know God through his word, and in his word, and where he changes our minds, and he changes and exchanges the old ideals, and the old ideas, and the old customs, for new customs, and new ideals, and new ideas. That is why Solomon writes in Proverbs 23 verse 7, as a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so easy. That word heart is used there, it refers to the innermost being of man. It refers to your spirit as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh. Oh, this is getting interesting. As a man's mind is renewed in his heart, so easy. As a mind, as a man digs into the scriptures and as a man studies the scriptures and as a man renews his mind with the scriptures, he changes in his heart. So easy. You are, you are the way you are like God, but you got to renew your mind to how God says you should be, how God says you should act, how God says you should respond to certain situations, how God says you should respond in love, how God says you should forgive, how God says you should have faith and not just look at what is natural in front of you, what you can see with the physical eyes. You see, that comes about, that change comes about as you renew your mind with the word of God. As you dig into the scriptures, allow the spirit of God to teach you the scriptures and allow that mind to be renewed. Where in the olden days, before you were born again, you acted a certain way when you were in trouble. You acted a certain way when someone insulted you. You acted a certain way when someone did you wrong. But now that you've renewed your mind with the word of God, now that you understand how God reacts and how God acts towards you and how God don't keep your sins against you and how God has good plans for your life and how God forgave you and how God responds in love. Now you learn by the renewing of your mind how to act as a Christian and how to grow as a Christian. Be ye not conformed to this world system, to this earthly natural system, but be ye transformed, be ye changed. How? How do I change? By the renewing of your mind. By renewing your mind with the word of God. By exchanging those old thinking patterns, those old ways of doing things. 
Because the only way a man can change is when he changes his thinking. That's why Solomon says, as a man thinketh in, as a man thinketh, as a man thinks, in his heart so easy. And you cannot think any other way than how you've been taught to think. What you've been exposed to. What you've been exposed growing up in, in the house that you, that, you, that you grew up in. What your parents exposed you to. What you were exposed to in the environment, in the community that you lived in, in the country that, or the city that you lived in. What you were exposed to will limit you to how you think or will take off the limits to the way you think. So what you expose yourself to has a direct influence on what you will achieve in life and what you will think. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. That's why it's so important to go to a good church. That's why it's so important to go to a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Because contrary to popular belief, the day you made Jesus Lord of your life was not the day that you stopped thinking. Was not the day that you stopped being intelligent. You just submit your thoughts to this word of God. That's what you, but you still got to be smart. You still got to think. You still got to use all the faculties that God has given you. God has given you intelligence and you got to use it. You got to subject it to the, to the scriptures. Yes, I believe that. And not be wise in your own eyes and wise in your own mind. But subject every thought and every idea and every way of thinking and measure it up with the word of God. You got to do that. But don't stop thinking. And the church has grown lazy, if you could put it that way, lazy to think, just accepting everything at face value, just accepting old norms, just accepting outdated methods and ways of doing things, even in the church, even how we present the gospel. There are some ways and some things that's outdated. And sometimes we need to shift things. Sometimes God shifts things. And because we're too lazy to think or to think outside of the box or we're too stuck in our old ways and the old way of doing things, we lose out on this generation. we got to have different ways to reach this generation. There's a different generation. There's a different culture out there, there's a pop culture out there, there's a culture of people and a way of thinking that we and a generation and, 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 and millennials that we have to reach and we will not be effective if we still hold on to the old ways the old ineffective ways of doing things, I'm not saying all of the old ways are wrong, I'm saying when we still hold on to old, bad, traditional teachings, bad, traditional teachings. I'm not saying all traditional teachings are are bad, but a lot of them are. A lot of them were foolish, and we need to think, and we need to examine things as a minister, and you need to bring it before God, and ask, is this relevant in this day and age that we're living? Is this still effective in this day and age that we're living Are we still reaching the generation that we're living in? Because the Bible is clear that God works in seasons and he works in cycles and he works in intervals. And God knows how we can reach this generation. And he will give you innovative ideas and creative ideas. Social media, for instance, that's a way that is an effective way to reach the people of this age, to reach millennials, to reach the young people of this age. Everyone's here. Everyone is here. Everyone's on their phones. 90% of the time, everyone's on their phones. Besides work, leisure time, out of work, while traveling home, getting home, on their way to work, 
their time, their, 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 their private time to themselves, most millennials, most people, even most adults, are on their cell phones, on their laptops, on their tablets, on their iPads, on their iPhones. They hear. And one of the most effective ways of reaching this generation is through modern technology, is through inter- information technology. And let me tell you something, God, God is the creator. God is the creator of all inventions, of all concepts, of all ideas, of all the new medical um, 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 Concepts that, that, that are of all the, the the new technology that's out there, the new car that is out there, the new television, the, the new phone, the new laptop. God has given somebody the concept, the idea, the innovation, the creativity to create that thing. All creation emanates from God, originates from God. God is the creator of all things. In fact, one of the names of God is Elohim. And it means he is the creator of all physical things. All physical things that exists was, ex- was, was, created, or was created by man through God giving him the wisdom and giving him the creativity. And the Bible is clear that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. So everything that God has created, everything that man think he has invented, God gave him the ability, God gave him the creativity, and God gave him the innovation, and God gave him the intelligence, and God gave him the brain to invent what ever was invented and we got to have our eyes open and we got to be sharp and we got to be clever enough to pounce on any any form of broadcasting any form of posting any form of vlogging and blogging and writing and video videoing and uh, and, and and audios and, and 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 all kinds of ways to broadcast and to Publish the good news of God. And God's made available information technology, modern technology, social media, all the different platforms, and we got to pounce on it and make sure that it's not the devil broadcasting his lies, broadcasting his destruction on there, and that he is not the one taking advantage of God's creation God's innovation that he has invested into mankind. Back to what I was talking about. I'm just referring to the many different ways we can help to expose people to the word of God, to expose people to the good news, to expose Christians to the good news, to get the good news across to people. I mean, it's not practical to walk around with a loudspeaker like they had in the old days and preach in the streets. How many people are going to pay attention to you if you do that? Even having 10 crusades in winter, for instance, it's not practical. People don't do that anymore. You're not going to attract the kind of, the, 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 the amount of people that you used to in the 70s and in the 80s and even in the 90s. There's a different type of people. People think different. People do different. People shop online. People order things online. People do things completely different in the day and age that we live in. So we got to get with the times. And we got to move with the times. The church cannot lag behind. The church cannot lag behind and KFC is doing it. McDonald's is doing it. The, 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 Shop on the corner is doing it. Everybody's taking advantage of this new way of doing things, but we're lagging behind. So the purpose of, 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 of me mentioning it is to get a good news, to broadcast, to broadcast, to shout it from the rooftops, to be that shining light, to shine your light so before men. The, 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 the Bible says that they may see your good works and Praise your Father who is in heaven. But you can only shine your light when you get on the rooftop. You can only preach this good news and get it to people's ears if you shout it from the, from the mountains. The Bible says, will you hide a lamp under a bushel? 
Will you hide when we, if we are the salt of the earth, how are we going to affect, how are we going to influence if we lag behind and we're still doing things the way it was done 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 40 years ago. No, we need to be right in the mix. We need to be right there where people are. We need to be right there where they are with their cell phones. You need to be right there on the internet. You need to be right there on demand on television programs and networks and on satellite television. We need to be right there where people are. The love of God needs to infiltrate through modern technology, through preaching at conventions, through preaching on the street corner, if you have through, to, through uh, approaching people on the street, approaching people in the malls. It's got to flow through you and we need to make use of innovative, creative ways to preach the gospel. And the purpose of it all, the purpose of why I do what I do is to change people's minds. Is to expose people to a new and living way. Is to let people know there's a better way. Is to let people know there's a God that loves you. The reason why I do what I do, the reason why I go through everything that I go through, all the trouble, all the, all the, all the, all the difficulty that comes with the, with the territory, The reason why I do it is to let someone know that there's a God who loves you. There's a God who cares about you. And the most effective way to reach people is through modern technology. And to get onto their level. Not necessarily with a suit and a tie. Not necessarily using Christian jargon. But to do it as plainly as can be. To present it Still with excellence, but as plain as can be. Not using traditional, over-the-top Christian jargon to try and impress people or to let people know, or to make people believe that you're a man of God, to make people believe that because you use certain terms and certain 10 hallelujahs and 50 praise the Lord while you speak, that you're representing God. You can represent God by having a conversation with someone on social media. You can represent God as long as you study the scriptures, as long as you have a firm foundation of the word on the inside of you. You can use modern technology. You can use social media. You can use many other forms to get the word of God from the pages of the Bible to allow the Holy Spirit to work on the inside of you, put that word on your heart, and when you speak, you can help people to be exposed to the word of God, even in an informal setting where they don't even realize that they, you're in church now, by the way. They don't even realize they're in church. You're in church now. If you're listening, you're in church now. It's just changed. Things that the world has changed. Things have shifted. This is a different generation. I'm just doing it in a different way. I'm not doing it in a way that's, that, 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 that's not going to be acceptable unto God. But I'm just doing it in a way that doesn't scare you off. I'm just doing it in a way that doesn't condemn you. That doesn't on purpose make you feel guilty. That doesn't on purpose make you feel ashamed. Only thing I want you to know is that God loves you. The only thing that I want you to know that in the spaces of the Bible, this Bible contains the wisdom of God that can change your situation, that can change your finances, that can change your family, that can change your condition, that can change your future. They can bring you in line with the purpose and the destiny that God has for your life. Because friend, I've got news for you. You're not just here by chance. You're not just here by accident. God created you. God predestined you. God foreknew you before you were in your mother's womb. He foreknew you. He knew your days. And he predestined you. And he called you. And then he justified you. And he glorified you. If you will follow God's will for your life. And the first thing to do. To follow God's will for your life. Is to give your heart to Jesus. Is to say Lord. 
take this life and do something with it. Lord, I don't know what to do anymore. My life feels so meaningless. I want to serve a greater purpose. I have a sense on the inside of me that there is something important that I need to do. If you're feeling that way today, friend, I want to let you know you, you 100% right. God brought you to the earth for a time such as this. At this time, 2024, God ordained that you should be alive at this time. Why? Because he has a plan for your life. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Good plans. Good plans, not plans of calamity, but plans of a hope and of a future. Plans of an expectant end. So those big dreams you have on the inside of you, those dreams about you know, doing well in life, those dreams about not being average, and not just not being ordinary, it's God on the inside of you that, are, that planted those dreams. Those dreams originate from God. It emanates from the heart of God, from God, what God had in mind when he created you. So you're not weird. You're not weird. You're normal. You normal. That extraordinary thoughts, that extraordinary dreams that you have in your heart, what you want to achieve, where you see yourself, those are dreams that have been placed on the inside of you by the Lord God Almighty because He's got good plans for your life. Good plans. He's got a good... I don't know what your situation is. I don't know where you find yourself today. I don't know what demons you're fighting. I don't know what your circumstances are. I don't know if you're over your ears in debt. I don't know if you're unemployed and been unemployed for four, five, six years. I don't know if you don't have a stable place to stay, don't have a house of yourself, if you're living on the street, if you're living in a shack. But I've got news for you today. God brought you to the earth for a time such as this to affect the earth, to be an influencer, to influence the, the earth and to make a good deposit in the earth for the next generation. God's got good plans for your life. God's got a big plan for your life. God's got a huge plan for your life. He made you special. He made you unique. There's no one else like you. No one else has the same voice patterns as you. No one else has the same fingerprints as you. No one else has the same DNA as you. You are uniquely, differently created by God Almighty. And there are problems in this world that God has created you to solve. You need to make a contribution somewhere. You need to be an agent of change somewhere in this world, somewhere on this earth. You were designed originally by God to create something, to do something, to teach about something, to invent something, to be the forerunner in something, to bring about change, to be an advocate for some course. I don't know what it is. I don't know how he wired you. I don't know how he put you together. But he knows how he put you together. And the only way to discover what he's made you is to come to him to come to him and to say Lord here I am you created me and you wired me a certain way there's certain things that that aggravates you there's certain things that just frustrates you normally that's where your passion is normally that's where your purpose is that thing that frustrates you so much that aggravates you so much that annoys you so much normally that's where you need to bring chains that's where God wants to use you and the things that excites you, certain things excite you, and certain things just you're just passionate about it, where others aren't. It's one of the ways to discover where God has gifted you, where God wants to use you, and where God's plan and purpose for your life lies. But it starts with giving your life to Him. It starts with having a relationship with Him. And he's given his only begotten son. He's made it so easy for us. He said, I give you my son. 
And by accepting him, there's a way back. It doesn't matter what you did wrong. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. It doesn't matter what you're caught up in right now as you're listening to me. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are like. It doesn't matter who you owe money to. It doesn't matter who you offended. It doesn't matter how others will see you and what they think of you. It matters what your creator, the one who brought you into the earth, the most important thing right now for you in your life is what he thinks of you. Is what God thinks of you. And what God thinks of you is that you're special. Is that he made you unique. Is that he made you differently from anybody else. That you don't have to be a copy. You don't have to follow this world. You don't have to jump on the bandwagon. You don't, you don't have to follow the culture of this world. You don't have to follow the pop, pop culture. You don't have to speak like they speak in your communities. You don't have to dress like they dress and think like they think. Because he's created you a designer's original. He's the designer and he created you an original, an original, unique, different being because he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And today he's calling on you and he's saying, he's calling you by your name. He's calling you Johnny, Monica, Sarah, whatever your name is. He's calling you by your name and he say, come unto me. All you are burdened and heavy laden. For I have given you rest. I am giving you peace. I'm extending the invitation to you. I've got rest for you. I've got peace for you. Come unto me and find rest. God is speaking to you today. He's calling you by your name. And if you don't know Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, thank you for speaking to me today. Thank you that you know me by my name. Thank you that only you and by your spirit could speak to me today the way you did. And therefore, I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Savior. I accept everything you did for me on the cross. And I accept that I am now a child of God. I am now part of the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, I am now a Christian. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, you are now born again. That's the most important decision you've ever made and could have ever made in your life. And from this moment on, you are a new spirit species. See, something happened. Something happened in your spirit. Your spirit was born again. It happened instantaneously. But now the most important thing you must do is to renew your mind with the word of God. Remember our, our, our golden text? Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, changed. How do you change now? Spiritually you've changed, but now your conduct needs to change by the renewing of your mind, by getting into a good Bible-believing church, a Bible-teaching church, and renewing your mind with the word of God. You are now a child of God. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful day further and remember, keep walking by faith. Radio East River. Radio East River. Radio East River. Radio East River. Do you want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio East River by emailing us at admin at radioeastriver.co.za. Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Easter River. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioeasterriver.co.za. Radio Easter River, on the Onze talent, onze mensen. What's up ons by 064 536 90 95.
talk to us, the gang wreck here. No need to check your watch. You already know what time it is.